My name is Nate McFarland, Senior Quality Engineer for Canon. My main responsibility is our reference display, so I'll always be your point of contact for any technical questions. I also handle all of the service procedures on the back end. So today I'm just going to give a quick little overview of the display lineup in general for those of you who aren't aware of the products or what we offer. So all of the Canon displays come in three different sizes, 17 inches, 24 inches, and 31 inches. So just to give you kind of an overview of where we started and where we are now, our first launch was back in 2014. We came out with a 3010. This was a 30 inch SDR monitor. A year later, then we came out with the 2410. This was a 24 inch monitor. For nomenclature for any of our models, the first two numbers after the V indicate the screen size. So 30, 10, 30 inches, 24, 10, 24 inches. Then in 2016, we came out with our first true HDR monitor. This was the 2420 could do a thousand nits full field brightness. One year later, we came out with our first Fourier into the 17 inch market, really targeting that onset area or broadcast worlds with our 1710. A year later in 2018, we introduced one new monitor and two kind of subsidiaries to existing monitors. So we came out with our 2411, which was a blend between the 2420 and the 2410. So it had all of the great image quality specifications of the 2420 with a thinner bezel size of the 2410. We also introduced our 2421 and our 1711 which were just 12G upgrades to their 2420 and 1710 counterpart. And then the big boy, at the tail end of last year in 2019, we came out with our brand new 3120, which is really our staple flagship monitor. And we're gonna talk about each one of these in a little more detail here shortly. Now these six models that I've outlined here in red, this is really the core of our current lineup. And as you can see here, we really just cover everything now from actual shooting or content acquisition all the way through finish and post. So we cover, you know, 4K, 12G shooting locations, the vans, the broadcast market, and then your true 4K post production as well. So right off the bat, I just wanted to give you kind of a side by side, what are you getting in each model as far as image quality specifications are concerned? You'll notice we don't make an HD panel. Our lowest resolution panels are 17 inches and these are still native UHD resolutions. This is really something that's unique to the Canon monitors and that we really like to tout about our displays is that we're really future proofing for content here. We're not you know, making something HD that you're gonna have to replace in a couple years when the industry is shifted full 4K. We're really ready right away to support the 4K market. Next, we're gonna be talking about peak luminance. Another thing to note, whenever we're talking brightness for Canon displays, I'm talking full field. So I know other manufacturers sometimes will say, we can do a peak of 1,000 or 2,000 nits, but that's only at a small 10%, 20% window. Any brightness specifications you see here for any nit value, whether that be black level or white, we're talking full screen edge to edge with no degradation in image quality here. So starting right away with our 17s, 600 nits full field. This is huge. I put this in red here because this is new. As of June, when our new firmware launches, all of our 17 displays will come natively 600 nits you can see I did put a little disclaimer here that we are also gonna be offering a paid upgrade to boost that to a thousand nits. So if you're really trying to push the boundaries of HDR, either on set or in your OBE or studio broadcast truck, we have you covered here. Our 2411 is a thousand nits. Our 2420 series does a max of 1200 nits edge to edge. And then the big boy, the 3120 can do 2000 nits full field edge to edge. Then going on, Next, we're talking black level. Uh, so this is also something that's gonna be changing with the new firmware, I'll touch on that later. But as it stands right now, the 1724 series all have a uniform black level of 0 0.005 nits, whereas the 3120 has a 0 0.001 nit black level. Now bit depth, we're 10 bit across the board, except for our 17 series. When you see these bit depths, that doesn't mean that they can't accept signals of higher bit depths. We're just talking about the panel's native bit depth. So even if you're at a 1710, you can still obviously receive 10-bit signals. Same thing with the 10-bit panels, you can still receive 12-bit signals. Now talking a little bit about the 17 series specifically, you know, as we stated earlier with the size, it's really just ideal for the broadcast and live production environment where you really can take advantage of that form factor. You can purchase add-on accessories in both the rack mount to fit easily on your rack system and your truck or a screen protector if you're really worried about rough and toughing it in some sort of you know, maybe implement climate set or something where you're worried you're going to be hitting it with the C stand or something like that. 
As far as size and weight is concerned right here, 17 inches, 17 pounds, pretty easy to remember. Most of our displays that are designed for onset environments like this come with an easy carry handle. So this is very easy to carry with one arm, uh, easily around the set, it can be moved around. Across the board, you'll notice right away that there's eight SDI terminals. This is a uniform across all of our displays. So four in, four out. So this does support pass through. So if you wanted to loop your signal through any of our displays, that's totally possible here. The capacity of the SDI terminals will depend on the model like we were talking about earlier. So if you have the 1710, that is the 6G model. The 1711 is the 12G model. So if you have the 6G model, to get that full 4K at 60 FPS, you're gonna need two SDI cables. Whereas when you go to the 12G model, now you only need one. Uh, similarly, we also support an HDMI terminal that also does 4K at 30 FPS, 422. The LAN terminal, this is where you're going to do your system link. So if you wanted to link one display to other displays or change their settings simultaneously, that's what the LAN terminal is for. You're also going to be using the LAN terminal to interface with our web control GUI, which allows you to do complete control of the display via Ethernet on a PC, laptop, things like that. Next, we have the DC 12 volt XLR terminal for remote power, and then obviously your typical AC power here as well. 17 also comes included with a tally light system. This is much more focused on the broadcast market, but just something to keep in mind. It will match the color scheme of your cameras as well. And then we put this in here just for reference because uh, we like to show clients this is kind of a typical array, more for the broadcast environment as well. But this is a typical array of our displays that you would see in a truck or a studio environment that's really meant to handle multiple feeds at one time. But it's also great for editorial work as well. If maybe you're working in a smaller studio where you don't have as much desk space or your room is a little smaller, things like that. It's been really popular for editorial work as well. Same with color. You can definitely color with a 2411 because it's now pushing up to that thousand nits. Flipping the display around, just like the 17, you'll notice that not a lot has changed back here. Really the only major differences are you've swapped the 12 volt XLR terminal for a 24 volt and that the SDIs on the 2411 are all 12G. So we don't have kind of a lower tiered model for the, the 2411 like we do here. It's just 12G. So you're going to get that 4K 60 FPS with just one cable. Speaking of the weight, you will see the same size. You're going up a factor of about 10 pounds here. So you went from 17 to 26 pounds, still very easy to one hand around a set. So very mobile as well, just like the 17 series. Now the 2411 has a boost mode. You're not really expanding that dynamic range. You're kind of taking the full range and pushing it up on a NIT scale. So you can see here, you know, typically the 2411 is natively 600 NITs with that 0 0.005 black. But when you enable that boost function, you're pushing up your whites. So you're now able to see all of that highlight detail, but your blacks will suffer. And when that boost mode is turned on, you go from a 0 0.005 nit black to a one nit black. And then obviously when you're stepping up from the 17 series to the 24 higher series, you're getting a 10 bit instead of an eight bit panel. Talking about the 3120, like I said, this is our brand new flagship display here. So this is engineered specifically for post-production in mind, HDR post-production. So we completely redid the backlight system for the 3120. So we did kind of three big changes. One, we added more physical LEDs to the panel. We also swapped from RGB LEDs to white LEDs. And that's what allowed us to really push the boundary for peak luminance. So that those white LEDs are brighter and they enable that 2000 nit edge to edge. And then the third thing we've done is we've completely remastered our image quality local dimming algorithms. So that will allow you to really reduce halation in between stark contrast areas, things like that. This newly redesigned backlight system in conjunction with that local dimming algorithm enables this 0.001 to 2000 nit, which gives you that 2 million to 1 contrast ratio. And then kind of the big seller for the 3120 that we've been telling people is that the 3120 exceeds the requirements for Dolby Vision certified facilities. So when you want Dolby to come certify your post facility to do Dolby Vision work, they test your facility and your display specifically on these kind of nine criteria here. So you can see the results from the 3120. They have a minimum specified pass level and a preferred specified pass level. And something that we're really proud of with the 3120 is that we've passed preferred in every single test criteria. You can know that going forward, you're going to be covered in your Dolby Vision work here. Now, just talking general color and grayscale reproduction on all of our displays, all of our displays across the board support all of the standard color spaces, SDR and HDR alike. So your 709s, your 1886s, P3, 2020 ASUS, 
Same thing with gamma curves. We have your typical powers supported for 2226, 24, things like that. Same thing with your HDRs, HLG, PQ. We have Canon log if you're shooting on Canon cameras. We have S log if you're shooting on Sony cameras. We also support user LUT input. So if you wanted to build your own gamma curves, no problem there. And then we're also compatible with pretty much every variety of color format out there right now. So RGB, YCBCR, XYZ, ITCCP, we have it all here. Now we wanted to quickly touch on 12G SDI support because this is a game changer for a lot of people for a lot of reasons. So obviously when you're dealing with 12G SDI in and outs, you can get one cable that has 4K, 4 to 2, 60 FPS, which is huge. And this allows us to actually do quad view of these 4K different signals. So you can obviously do what your typical four, full view 4K signal, but then also you could do a quad view. And the interesting thing about our quad view here is that you could put different image quality settings or user settings on each quadrant. So say I had you know, four different images and I had four different LUTs, I can easily put four different LUTs. Or I have the same image and I wanted to uh, you know, AB a different LUT on each. It's very easy to do via this SDI. When you have four 12G SDI inputs in the back of your display, your display can now actually enable the viewing of 8K content. The panels themselves are native 4K resolution, so you're going to be looking at a down res 8K image, but you'll still have a panel that's able to play back an 8K image, which is rare. The thing we're most proud of in all of our displays across the board is our award-winning HDR toolkit. So we really designed these tools to help remove ambiguity in HDR imagery. So we just want to make your life easier as user operators on our displays. So we have things like scalable waveform, vector scopes, histograms, pixel value checking, false color, web tools, the list goes on and on. Another thing we're really proud of, we just launched the color calibration service. So when we were looking at the display market, we were talking to a lot of our friends in the industry and there was this very clear message of when you're dealing with these high end reference monitors, there's not really a clear entity that's supporting calibration for these guys. Uh, the calibration uh, typically has been more so in like the home theatrical space, but nothing, no one's really grabbed on to, you know, the game of calibrating these high-end reference monitors. So after looking at, you know, what the industry was saying and some of our friends were saying, we thought, you know, why don't we just go ahead and offer our own calibration service? So this is something that was launched at the tail end of last year. And the great thing about our calibration service is that it's not just limited to Canon displays, but will actually calibrate any display you have. And unlike other manufacturers' calibration services, we're going to be coming to your site. So we're not going to be asking you to send in your monitor to our lab that might have different ambient lighting or viewing conditions that you're used to. We're going to calibrate it in the environment where you're using it. So the calibration is most accurate and best suits your needs. So shifting gears now from general specs to upcoming firmware changes. So we're going to be launching our new firmware on June 11th. We're really excited about it. And these come with some pretty breakthrough updates here. So I touched on this a little earlier. So for both our 17 series and our 2411, we've ported over the image processing algorithms from our 3120 to these other models. So that's going to enable a 0 0.001 nit new black level from that previous 0 0.005. Uh, now, a question I've been asked a few times is, is that really that big of a difference? You're only talking about 0 0.004 nits. If you ask any colorist, they'll say unanimously, yes, that's a huge deal. Now shifting to some paid upgrades. So we also are going to be enabling a new 1000 nit peak brightness for our 17 displays. So you can see on the chart on the left here, that combined with the 0 0.001 nit black level increase is going to completely overhaul the image quality performance of these displays. And that's something we're really, really excited about. So you're going to go from a 005 low to a 600 high, all the way down to a 001 low with a 1000 high, which is a huge, huge increase in full screen contrast ratio. Now in that same vein for the 17s, previously we talked about the boost function. So without the boost function active, you're looking at local dimming at 300 nits. When you go ahead and switch on that boost function, we talked about that there would be some you know, sacrifices being made there. So previously when you would switch on the local dimming and your new peak brightness would go up to 600, the local dimming would actually go away and you would switch to global dimming. Now the maximum supported local dimming nit value is 600. So that's great. If you do go ahead and boost to 1000, when you're at 600 or above, you're still going to be looking at global dimming, but you still get the benefit of having that local dimming algorithm active for 600 and below, which is really great. 
Now switching gears to more feature-oriented changes, now you can just take kubelets and put them directly in. So there's no need to interface with the LUT converter tool anymore. This is a change that's been requested readily over the past year or so. So we're really happy to finally bring this to market. We've also updated our Cinema EOS link function here so that now when you're interfacing with our Canon Cinema cameras, your color range settings will be automatically changed. And lastly here, when we're talking about camera support, we've also added new LUTs for red digital cinema cameras. We like to make our displays as manufacturer friendly as we can with including things like S-Log support. Now we're doing the same thing for red. So we can go right from video signals captured with red cameras to traditional SDR and HDR gamma curves and color spaces. One of our most popular features was our pixel value checker. And that would just put a crosshair on the screen. You can move around anywhere and it'll give you the RGB code value and the peak lumens of that current pixel. We've now added a chromaticity diagram on off toggle. So not only will you get those mathematical and numerical representations, but now that will actually go ahead and plot the X, Y coordinate of that specific pixel directly on the chromaticity diagram. This is really gonna be useful for people that are trying to confirm color space conformance. So if you wanted to see, hey, where am I in relation to 709 or 2020 or P3, this is a great little quick, easy tool. Flip it on, take a look, flip it off, you're done. It's, it's really great for reference in that sense. We've also expanded our area markers. So we've now added the ability to simultaneously display more area markers. So if you wanted to add things like logo, uh, title safe, uh, one thing we've been seeing more of now is flipping the, the common 16 by nine ratio to nine by 16 to support things like cell phone or social media content. You can now all do all of this simultaneously. And then one last thing here is we've added a new error history export. This is more geared toward it's broadcast environments where you're having these in, a, in an array or a bigger, a bigger system um, that's integrated together. The ability to quickly see your signal errors or your power errors and identify that really helps to speed up troubleshooting. You can easily identify, is it a cable issue? Is it a display issue? What's going on here? So we've also added a new luminance comparison mode to the 3120. So previously, if you wanted to look at a 2000 nit pass and a 1000 nit pass, you would have to kind of pre-program two different user profiles to do this. Now you can just go ahead and same screen it. So just like you can AB, HDR versus SDR, you can now do that for specific luminances as well on the 3120, specifically 1000 and 2000. So that's a really good kind of AB system. Um, you know, a lot of people will ask things like, what am I actually getting with that extra thousand nits? Um, and as we continue to push higher and higher and display technology continues to evolve, I think having tools like this where you can really see the fine details of what you're actually getting with those added nit values is really, really powerful. And then last thing here, we've just uh, updated and made some improvements to our existing web tools. So most of these are just quality of life tweaks, whereas you can control the functions easier, you can input changes easier, but nevertheless important. And I will say with our web tool, we're very open to developers, you know, designing their own GUIs around it. So if you're ever wanting to design that sort of system, we're more than happy to talk with you about releasing SDKs so you can build your own platform around our existing web tool protocol.